folks, and welcome to the latest edition of Northern Consultations. I'm your friendly neighborhood Soda here, and today I have a very special guest joining me. Not only is he the former Intergeekdom champion of the world, but he's also one of the stars of Bobby's World, Kevin Smets. Wow. How you doing, very Kevin? Very nice. I like your shirt, man. It reminds me of my pitch to Christian when I had my audition. Uh, I did That's photoshops, and I made a photoshop exact replica of that shirt, but it said Machmo Man on it. And in character. Wow. So I'm talking like the Macho Man, and I'm like, and they got merch already. Look at all the merch. And I'm holding up pictures of the oh, shirt man. that says Machmo Man. And I think deep down, that's actually... he was like, that's, oh, uh, there's no way. That's a copyright infringement. What, what can I do? That's a gimmick infringement. <laughs> what can I do with you? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. That's actually why I wore the shirt today because I've heard, I've heard that story before. Um, I'm, I'm going to assume you were a wrestling fan back in the day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I grew up uh, a wrestling fan of the 80s and, uh, well, especially like the early 90s is when I really caught on. I remember one of the earliest things I saw was when The Undertaker uh, locked uh, Ultimate Warrior in the casket, and I was like freaking out. And then they had uh, house shows. I didn't understand the house show circuit, how they'll have a house show in L.A., and then they do another one in, in Chicago, and like they're all over the place. So I was so like young and naive, and uh, I knew that the Ultimate Warrior was facing the Undertaker in a casket match after he was locked in a casket, and my dad couldn't take me to that event. And I remember watching ESPN Sports Center the night of that event, the house show, thinking that yeah. they would cover it on ESPN, which they never did. And I was like, well, I, need, I had no clue. If I, I think I ended up looking it up. There's a website where it has all of the former house shows ever, and I finally looked it up. I'm like, okay, it looks like it ended – in a DQ, so or I think it was a DQ, but I just remember looking wow. it up. You could look up, yeah, at the Los Angeles Sports Arena back early days. I mean, AG oh yeah, that would have been probably. that would have yeah. been what ninety one. Yeah, it was nine. It was right after uh, WrestleMania seven, and WrestleMania seven was the the VHS player or the VHS tape that I got, and that's what made me a Macho Man fan. The Undertaker, or sorry, the Ultimate Warrior versus Macho Man retirement match, where then Elizabeth yes. pops the railing and becomes good again, and or you know he becomes good again. Uh, yeah, it's great. Yeah, he was my that's favorite. One of my, my favorite. That's one of my favorite WrestleMania matches. I watched that tape so much as a child, and even the, just that moment of uh, him lift Liz up on his shoulders again. It it's a beautiful moment. Oh. It's definitely one that'll live on in wrestling history. Oh, I get teary. I want to see that. <laughs> right? Still, is this still, something that you still day. follow? Uh, is no. it uh, wrestling still something that you follow? Or have you fallen off? Uh, yeah, fair enough. Funny. I've fallen off a little. Uh, I mean, I watch, I used to have, as of this year, I had WWE Network. Um, I just, honestly, mm -hmm. I can't get into it without the fans. So, like, and I, I like the Boneyard match with AJ Styles and Undertaker, but I just couldn't get into, yeah, I think that's one that, like, needs the ebb and flow of the fans and stuff like that. And yeah, I, I do like going to indie shows, but some of the best part about the indie shows, it's, it's in a small, like, you know, uh, uh what's it called elks lodge like i used to go to pwg with mm. my old roommate and we would see like kevin owens when he was kevin steen and uh kill steen kill or whatever um and and with el generico which is now Sami Zayn, but that yeah. was in like a small elks lodge and it was just super loud so i don't know yeah. something without the crowd kind of just made me like oh, i got so many other things i need to focus on anyway with the, the baby yeah. you know so but yeah i i still <laughs> like i it's on my uh sports apps and i'm able to like follow up with it and you know i know everything that's going on but i don't really necessarily watch it maybe at wrestlemania season i will again yeah i'm in the same boat as you just because there's just literally so much content that i'm just um i'm worn out at the moment um you now, see that you see that like, they're gonna do with smackdown they're doing that new thunderdome yes. thing so I'll, I'll check that out because it but it looks like from the stills i saw it looks like wwe 2k10 like from on playstation like yeah so it's fun, a fun really thing. It's really weird. I, I, I'm I'm gonna give it a shot for sure because it's SummerSlam this weekend, so I'm excited about that. But yeah, yeah. Um. So when it comes to your uh your character IG, have you did you draw any inspiration from uh, your love of professional wrestling for that, or is oh, that yeah. all just you? Oh yeah. Um. I mean, originally I wanted to come in as Machmo Man, and yeah. the idea was to be in character, even when I was in be like in between takes or whenever I was into the, going into the studio. Christian's like, let's have everybody think you're a lunatic that really thinks he's the Macho Man. Like that was what <laughs> earliest ideas. And then when it just didn't pan out, um, yeah. With when I got together with Kaiser, Kaiser's a child of wrestling too. Like you know, his he yes. told you the stories with his dad and how he knew Hawk and Animal and stuff. So 
he had this vision. Like my idea at first was going to be more leaning on, and and it's so funny, like leaning on an assassin. I didn't know that everybody was going to start calling me the Winter Soldier lookalike. But like my original pitch, even though they had they had another <laughs> assassin, but I was going to be like Kevin the Assassin Smets, and the whole idea was Kaiser came in with a vendetta against Christian, and he we had a list. It kind of you know not that Brandon Hanna stole the idea. It's a great idea, but Brandon mm-hmm. Hanna that idea of a list, like we were going to have a list, and we we're just going to take out everybody until he took out. Cushing and Kalinowski just to get to, you know, and then, but when we got to the studio, he's like, no, no, you're going to be the smasher. But we knew going in, uh, I had ideas of like having a mask and I, I've shared it before. We're like just pictures of it. I could probably see if I could dig it up while you're talking. Uh, I had pictures of uh, me. That would be February, 2019. Yeah. I did these yeah. tests. Yeah. J- actually January is when I made it. I did these tests with, like, I knew I was going to wear like a, a, some sort of iteration of the hoodie um this is funny i'll show it to you guys i yeah not many people have seen this so the, oh <laughs> yeah like this uh that was my earliest iteration where it was going to be like the assassin but then oh wow. i showed the kaiser was like man you look you're looking too much like a like mortal Kombat character and he wasn't wrong so i think that was like <laughs> the earliest ideas we had and then and then it started to work its way to where like i was like i got a really cool like hoodie for that costume that costume idea and then yeah then i was like all right yeah there's then there's like the earliest like just like should i do it like that and then these were other the other, the other ideas i had the winter soldier arm thing and uh ended up yeah ended up just going with the hoodie but then yeah that was it was more about kaiser telling me about the movie warrior and so we were really drawn inspiration from mm. that actually as far as you go in you don't you know i've morphed now where i talk a little more but you go in and you're going to be like the, the Tom Hardy from Warrior. Just hoodie down, take it off, do business, knock them out, and then just leave. Don't even like stick around for you know the high fives or anything like that. And uh, he drew a lot of inspiration for him from Hawk uh, and, and the Road Warriors because you know, and then also a little mixture of like Bobby Heenan. Yeah. So we did come in and we said let's take let's do that '80s wrestling vibe, heels or bad. Like we didn't care if you cheered us or boot us or that was our whole thing too was like let the fans decide so we never really yeah. i think christian in his mind thought we were heels but we just came in and it was like we would give props to people that gave us props but we would you know you know piss off if you know free for all no one really knew who i was at that time so we get a lot more booze but that was fun because then i was just looking at him and you know like you're you're beneath me and stuff so it was fun to, to lean into that Oh yeah, that, that the that I think that's definitely what ingratiated you guys to the uh, to the fans right away. Now, did it, when it came to your character, work, did you feel comfortable? Like, did you get it right away, or did it take a few matches for you to to just hone in and and like lock in and like, okay, this is the character. Um, in the matches, I was fine, but that's because I was so focused and so like determined to do well. Um, yeah. the character work outside of it, I think we did well with Jay Washington. Um. You know, you're learning, and everybody. You know, I think that there were parts where I would break character, or, or Ellis would make me smile or crack a smile because he'd say a joke about hot, like because I was a fan. I can remember I came from a fan, so my first couple matches, it's kind of surreal that I'm on there, and Christian would want me to be 100 percent in character, and so Ellis knew that and always was like, "I'm gonna get you this time," and he'd always make me laugh, whether it was like, you know, who has the like a free for all pinchable cheeks, and then yeah, the, only, <laughs> yeah. the real the real error that I did uh, and. Uh, we've t- I've talked about this before is at the t- at free for all on stage. I go on stage and we have a stare down with Kalinowski and he was trying to build up for potentially collision. If I beat Hector Navarro and we have the stare down. And what I didn't understand is the optics of what it was. They didn't have me mic'd, but I actually put my hands on his suit and I look and then I say, just like, like rude. I say nice suit guy. And then I like walk off. But when you look at it from far away, Christian came to me backstage. He's like, what did you say to him? It looked, cause like, he was like, it was good. You were staring at each other down. And then it, he said, he said it on backstage once. Like, it looks like I just put my hands on his pot. I was like, hey buddy, like, hey, it's my good friend. Cause the <laughs> was, you know, no one could hear me. And the optics was, I just put my hand on his shoulder and I said something nice. And then I walk off where really I was like, nice suit guy. Like, like really like rude, but you can't pick up on it. So that was like the last time and then, you know, Christian was very good about, and I'm very good about wanting feedback and wanting to hear it. And Christian was like, yeah, mm-hmm. you just got to kind of stay in character the whole time. And to be honest, the times that I have broke character at collision, uh, uh, when I lost, I feel like uh, that was not, that was less breaking character. I was pretty in character in that match. It was a pretty intense match, but uh, 
that killer instinct. And then the last, the last time that I broke character, I didn't break character after that until a couple of weeks ago when I lost the title and we can get into that later, mm -hmm. but yeah, that it was uh, for me keeping that character was the most important thing. Once he put that hoodie up and there's challenges that are involved with that, of trying to stay in character, the, the, the deep down human innate desire for people to, to want to like you. So when I was trying to be heel and then I tried to go heel at spectacular and then that didn't work because the fans were kind of cheering us. And yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, um, that moment of collision last year, the infamous don't tell Peter, um, how did that change your approach to the game? Uh, man, if you watch any of my early matches, it, it's like I watch it now and I'm like, if I had a time machine, I, I would go back and be like the old Biff slapping young Biff at Back to the Future and be like, <laughs> you're an idiot. Because there's no reward for answering questions before the, the question's written. And I did that a lot. In fact, in mm -hmm. fact, the weeks leading up to collision, you can tell it's almost like <laughs> I'm working for a NASA show right now. So it's like. Uh, so I'm, I guess oh. I'm making comparisons, but like, it's like, you know, looking at something where you're like, oh, when the, the shuttle takes off, you want to make sure everything's good. Cause like, if you see a little anything that could create a problem later. And if you watch the Harry Potter match, but if you watch the, the Hector Navarro match, which was fine. Cause I won and I, I was kind of in my game there, but my uh, against yeah. Jay Washington in that Harry Potter round where I just swept it, I was answering questions before it was finished. And then in the Marvel Cinematic Universe match, uh, when I was up there with Rachel and Mike and all them, the one that Sean Gerber won, uh, mm -hmm. if there, there's a part. It was on my birthday. We taped that after I beat Hector, so it was like on House Money. My friends got me across the street, and I had a couple beers, so I was kind of having fun with it, more relaxed. Yeah. But I was answering questions before they were finished. And Christian, at one point, was like, hey, man, just so you know, like, could you try to finish it because you know we're trying to get this on podcast form too and i'm like okay and then i do it again and you see me in the match i stop and i'm like and i'm looking off at christian broke character of course but uh, it's exhibition but i broke character and yeah. i was just like dude sorry like and then i waited and then i said the answer so those were like the early weaknesses that i realized and then at collision not that i answered that too quickly but i didn't I, like i had it was my five like i had all these jtes it's like you don't take them home with you like i don't know what i was thinking and if i would have stopped and really replayed the scene in my mind i would have gotten it to the end if i would have used one jte it's a totally different world who knows what happens in overtime you know i'm not saying that it would have been an automatic win but who knows what happens in overtime and then who knows if i go to san diego and then i play rachel and it's just a whole different trajectory so what happened was that slowed my game down it actually made me more humble and i think when people ask me, do do I regret it? Like, I love my season last year because I like that I, I went on this collision course with him. Collision, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. Pun intended. And I fell a little bit, and that kind of humbled me. And then that was that was enabling me to kind of eat humble pie a little bit, and then really refocus my game and uh, get better. And then as I got better, that allowed me to do a little more character work where we fleshed out the Smasher character a little bit more where you just wasn't frowning all the time. And then that's when the cheers started happening. That's when people people yeah. like a good redemption story. Sam Levine told me right after, he was like, this is going to be your redemption story. Uh, the, uh, it's, it's always a better story to tell. And, you know, you don't want to hear that after you lose. But at the end of the day, you know, getting to do that and win the title at Spectacular Live, like in the fashion that I did, like I think that whole yeah. overall arc you know, it, you couldn't have scripted it better. Yeah, it was it, like, you know, like you said, the whole redemption thing. It's like the line in Rocky Balboa. It's not about how hard you can get hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving yeah. forward. That's how yeah. winning is done, right? Yeah. And yeah, no, yeah. Your season last year was was 100% spectacular. So what uh, after you won the title, what was that like? Uh, I, it was honestly, it was like I wanted to get back to work. I was so on a peak of my uh, knowledge at that point, and I was like, and I was so excited that we were going to do uh, have the Mara match in New York, like three or four weeks later. And I was like, I was like, yeah, let's do it. Like I wanted to be a fighting champion, like, and I wanted to do it live again. I love it live. I like it better than the studio. I, I like the studio. The studio is fine, um, but I, I like it live. I think I've missed one question in my two matches live ever. So. Um, to me, just wow. being on stage just kind um, of feels at home. Uh, and I, I like performing and I like getting the crowd amped up and stuff like that. So I was really excited for New York. So the feeling that I had was, first of all, surreal, um, but also just I, I was happy to do it for Kaiser because I know how hard, you know, he and I worked and how it just started in my edit bay, creating these characters and stuff like that. And then at the end of the day, like how he got to hand it to me, you know what I mean? And he handed me the title and like you see in the footage, like I, I'm looking down at the title, like not that I couldn't believe it, but just 
like because I, I kind of woke up that day feeling like uh, I was unbeatable. That was a day where I, mm -hmm. I just remember feeling like it was just a matter of time. Just let's just get the questions out of the way and then hand me the title. Like I just felt my training and everything was like at peak. And so I wanted to continue that. So I remember yeah. over Christmas break, I was just like kind of still not studying, but just kind of keeping a little fresh. And then, um, you know, it was unfortunate that Mara had to back out, but we understood that. And then that's where then the constant pushing and uh you know then it was going to be so then it wasn't new york then it was going to be uh wrestlemania weekend when they were trying to lock that down then it that would have be been cool with, yeah that, i was excited for that I, I remember the phone call when christian called me i was just so excited and then and then it happened and then christian was cool man then he was like offered the card in houston he knew how much i loved doing it live like we still yeah. i don't even want to spoil it because then free for all got pulled too but like kaiser and i had an epic entrance plan for free for all and we had an oh, epic, yeah. entrance, epic entrance plan for um uh houston and it, you know really even deep digging deeper into that wrestling roots of our character so hopefully one day everyone will get to see it but yeah uh so yeah when i won the title it was just a lot of just an exhale it was also like i always kind of embraced the don't tell peter and so now it doesn't bother me when people say it because it's a reminder for me that like you know it's that i i was able to come back and that actually has helped me uh, that whole year last year, the way it happened, helped me really swallow this loss too. Cause it's like, Oh, I've been here before. You know what I mean? I've, you know, I've been here in this position before where you have this devastating loss and then uh, I know how to come back from it. So, you know, I've already have the blueprint to how to do it and uh, we'll, I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what you do next. Personally, I would like to Thanks, see man. you in singles. That's just me. I would, I think you would kill him there. Um, how much more Thanks, special man. has your, how much more special has your run in the Schmodown been having your best friend by your side? Not just in like a uh, chemistry, okay, oh, yeah. but I mean like your real life best friend. Yeah. It's, it's, it's nothing that can be beat, you know, like just our moments. He's talked about it. Uh, our moments in the bowels of this uh, dressing room uh, at spectacular. And it was like a, a half an hour before the match. And he just started playing, you know, just our music, you know what I mean? Like just deep rock and just, just, just and we knew it was funny. Cause like, KO was in the other dressing room with like, it was like a low ceiling. So we knew he was hearing our music and yeah. just like Pantera and just, he was just getting me in that mode. And then like, just we're walking and he was still holding the phone behind me. And it's like, we, we, did, we always knew spectacular was going to be like, let's go all in. Like collision was fun, but I was nervous. I was, it was my fourth ever match. And like, you know, you want to do well and stuff at spectacular. I was like, let's lay it all on the line. Like, let's do the most epic entrance. Let's go. I'm going to, I'm going to be charged on the, on the, on the, on the stage. Like, and it was a celebration for me and him. We talked about it. It was like tonight, win or lose is a celebration of our year. Like we will not come away uh, feeling um, uh, disappointed or we were going to be proud win or lose. Now, of course we wanted to win and, I really had a strong feeling I was, but it was, yeah, to do it with my best friend, like all season long. And, and then that meant my win was just as much his win. And, you know, I love him. So it was, mm -hmm. it, you know, getting that title and knowing that like he got it and it was just, just it was his title just as much as mine. So it makes it more fun to be honest. And someone, people ask me like, will I leave the dungeon or whatever? Like I'd like to consider myself trying to do, you know, what uh, Kobe did and stay with the Lakers. And I feel like I'll be dungeon for life. Like I, you know, unless Kaiser steps away, I just don't see myself yeah. doing it uh, with anyone else, you know? Yeah, no, fair, fair enough. I, I want to say about your whole buildup with Kalinowski, like thinking back about it now, it, it to me, it, it seems like it helped that you two were actors because it rem the buildup reminded me of Austin Rock WrestleMania 17, you know, like oh, these yeah. two uh, unstoppable forces like converging to meet and it was going to be, and it turned out to be a great program. Um, yeah. how, uh, how did you feel about the buildup to that? I love the buildup. I, I like the buildup before Collision too. I think I think it told a good story. Um, and you know he, you know I was a fan of the the league before. So for me, like to be in the in the cut scenes with him and you know the stare down, even though I messed up. Hey buddy, even though I was making fun of it <laughs> too. But uh, yeah. yeah, to be able to like you know go toe to toe with him, and he's just one of the greatest of all time. I think he is up there on Rushmore to be honest. So um, mm -hmm. it's been an honor. And he's, you know, behind the scenes, like we're close, like we're friends. So, you know, to mix it up like that and to have have a match with someone and knowing that like win or lose, uh, you know, you're happy for the other guy and you know that the other guy's happy for you. Like that that's the way to go. And maybe that doesn't happen right away. You know, uh, you, know it, you know, it's hard to lose and, you know, 
you know, everybody knows that he kind of stormed off and, you know, I never held him against that or anything. I was just making sure my friend was okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. So, so we have two questions that we like to ask every guest to essentially end the interview because we know we don't have you for too long. The first one is tell us something that the, nobody knows, like something about you that nobody think of, like something nobody knows. Uh, nobody knows. Uh, I will rock <laughs> Phantom of the Opera at any karaoke bar, anytime, any place. So, I'm really, oh, yeah, I'm Phantom of the Opera, and <laughs> I'll go in there and sing, uh, you know, All I Ask of You or Music of the Night. And uh, it's funny too, especially if it's like some of these karaoke bars, you know, there's just a lot of bikers in there and they're singing, <laughs> they're singing Sweet Caroline and all, all the standards. And then I come up there like, No more talk of darkness. Forget these yeah. wide-eyed fears. Oh my God! What the heck? Yes. Yeah. Have you uh, now? Please tell me you've done all I ask of you with Kaiser. Oh no, that, <laughs> no. Usually I try to find <laughs> a beautiful girl in the crowd who will sing it with me. You know, there's always someone. There's always nice, someone nice on Broadway. That's always a, when I was single. That was always a good way to 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 meet the ladies to sing a duet with them. No kidding, man! I love that. Phantom of the Opera is one of my one of my favorites. Um, I I listen to more to the movie soundtrack just because it's more in a key I can sing to. Oh, there you <laughs> but, go. But uh, yeah, the music on that is is yeah, amazing. Um, okay. Okay. Too. Yes. Have you seen it? Yeah, I've seen it. I don't hate it as much as everybody else does, but I think that there are like three or four songs on that soundtrack that are yeah. as good as any in the original. I'm not saying better, but I'm saying if you you could make a yeah, combo yeah. soundtrack, it would all for me be like this is. These are the some of the best songs ever. So, okay, if I can make a recommendation, there uh, years before Love Never Dies came out, um, Andrew Lloyd Webber was working on on the sequel, obviously, and uh, out of that session came a book called The Phantom of Manhattan. Um, it is more of a sequel to the musical. Um, it is based off that script. It, it follows a similar idea of what you see in Love Never Dies, but I, I actually recommend reading it. It's it's pretty okay, good. I'll check that out. That would be great. Yeah, I got not. I'm not watching yeah, Geek The Phantom of Manhattan. <laughs> There you go. Um, okay, and the second and final question is, um, say in a week's time, uh, uh, an announcement is made out to the world, and honestly, I wouldn't, with the way things go, and I wouldn't be surprised. Um, movies are done. There's no more movies uh, a week from now. You can never have a movie again. What are three movies that you would um, watch during that time, the, 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 for the last time? Well, my joke answer would be, uh, there's a movie called Ambiance. Have you heard of it? <laughs> Uh, no, I have not. The movie trailer for the movie Ambiance alone is seven hours long. 432 oh. minutes. That's the trailer. The movie, when it's finished, yeah. it's going to release this year. Well, I don't know if it'll release this year. It's 30 days long. I'm not joking. You can Google it. If, if the guys and the fellas in oh, the chat. I've heard, I have heard of this. So I would watch that. So then I would have 30 days of movie, even though it's just one shot static on the beach with two people being weird. But no, if I was going to have to oh, answer smart. that. Glory is my favorite movie of all time, and I love the soundtrack to that. Ed Zwick, Denzel Washington, Matthew Broderick, mm -hmm. uh, about the Civil War and the 1st Black Regiment, the 54th. Uh, just growing up, that really moved me, and it made me a huge Civil War buff, and that got me into that. And then uh, James Horner's score is amazing. And and then he ripped himself off on the Avatar and has, like, it, it's literally some of the same cues. It's funny if you look. There's yeah. comparison videos, but I didn't even mind because I was like, it's Glory, but, like, with Jungles vibes. Yeah. So glory. Uh, Empire. I've been getting that with John Williams a lot lately. Oh yeah, yeah. He John Williams reused. Yeah, you listen to. Indie. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, if you listen to Marion's theme and Leia's theme, yeah, they sound so much alike. Oh, interesting. I like that. Yeah, in uh, 2002, he did the scores for Attack of the Clones and Chamber of Secrets, and he lifted an entire piece of music. If you you could search that online, it's during when Draco and him are chasing after the Snitch. It's the same music from uh, the chase on Coruscant in Attack of the Clones. He totally like exactly. Oh, I'll definitely look that up. Like exactly hmm. the. <laughs> Anyways, um, but yeah, Empire Strikes Back would wow. be my second movie. And then the third movie, because I always like a good like sports story. It's a tie between Creed and Warrior. So those two, I think oh, Warrior is yeah. overtaken. But I love the first Creed movie. I love all the Rockies too. Yeah. But you know, Ditto. Creed just that gets me going. Yeah. Okay. Your thoughts on number five? Is it as bad as everyone says it is? Well, I heard the original script had him going in the ring. I wonder if the fans would have liked it if he went in the ring and it was more formulaic where he mm -hmm. fought Tommy Gunn in the ring. Um, yeah. I don't. Hey, I, I think it has 
it has good messages in that. You know, the soundtrack's kind of whack, but you know, I, I liked some of the stuff it tackled about how like you realized how Rocky was really shield shielded from all of the promoter mm -hmm. nonsense that's big in boxing today. And I, I liked how he was trying to save Tommy from that. And I, I, my room's outside. I mean, I, I didn't hear no bell. Like yeah. some of the, there's some great lines out of it. So look, I like yeah. all the rock. You knock him down. What should I knock him me down? Yeah, exactly. So I, yeah, I, I don't hate it as much, but I mean, it's still on the bottom of it. You know, I like yeah, all the yeah. other better. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's good to good to hear somebody with for once not say it's a bad movie because I'm in a similar boat. I personally think the script for that one is better than four, but I get more enjoyment out of four, obviously. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, and course. also my favorite Elton John song comes out of uh, funny enough, Rocky Five, the one that plays over the credits. The end, Measure of credits, man. Yeah, the Measure of yeah. Man. Yeah. yeah, it's a great tune. I, I wish you hear you'd hear it more often. Um, your favorite Rocky movie? <sighs> Man, I love the opening credits of Rocky Three with Eye of the Tiger and him going yeah. on that run, beating everybody. Um, and uh, I, but uh, yeah, I mean, I still, I'm a sucker for four. Like, I gotta still say four. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For for me, it's one, and I cheat a little bit. I say one and two are the same movie. <laughs> yeah. Like I love those two, like unequivocally. Yeah, I love them. I love them to death. Don't get me wrong, but like the the th three and four get me wanting to go to the gym. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so. I agree. Oh yeah, the 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 the, the synth scores on four are great to get your adrenaline yeah. pumped, especially uh, the war slash um, war and training Rocky montage. Plays, right? There's some there you can find yeah, it on exactly. iTunes. I think they they have a band doing training montage, and it's just not the same. It's it's like the same band that would have done gonna yeah. that would have done it if it was like from Rocky three or two. And it's interesting to hear it because you're like, oh, that's how it would be without that synth score. But there's nothing beaten. You know what I mean? It's just that measure, oh, that's part of sure. moment of time. Yeah, it, it fits. It fits so perfectly. And on that note, Kevin, I would like to thank you very much for joining us on Northern Consultations. Um, uh, any upcoming projects in uh, your, your editing world that uh, you can uh, let the fans know about? Uh, we're still trying to get that Revan short film uh, or the Revan series launched, uh, and that's based on Knights of the Old Republic, the machinima that we uh, I'm attached to, which is great. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I'm working for NASA's and SpaceX, so whenever you see the launch and all the packages that are wrapped up with the launch, where they're sending out uh, capsules to space, they're going to the International Space Station. So I've been working on that, and then uh, yeah, I got a little bundle on the way coming uh, at the end of September. So. You know, uh, losing that title was a little was hard, but you know, all the props, all the props to the current champion right now. Uh, for as far as I'm concerned, it's on loaner for him, and I got a lot of busy stuff with the kid <laughs> coming up and getting and yeah. gotten married and, and moving. But uh, you know, uh, he'll enjoy that title, and it'll be a fun match to watch. It's spectacular. But I'll be back next year, man. And uh, yeah, we're, we're probably uh, you know. I don't think it's that much an exclusive. I think Kaiser kind of mentioned it after the loss, but I think you might not be disappointed if, if you're looking to see me in other divisions next year. So oh, that's all. I, I'm hoping, and I'm assuming you're going to nickname your baby Bam Bam because you're the smasher. Oh, that's good. I should. Well, she's a girl. It'll be a girl, <laughs> but we'll figure out. A, a yeah, Bam Bam Batman. works either way. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Okay, and where can everybody find you on the interwebs? Also, uh, oh yeah, every man. Every time I accidentally say my email address, I'm not kidding. <laughs> uh, at well, now I just gave a clue to what my email address. Uh, send me fan mail. It's fine. Just kidding. Uh, at Kev Smith at uh, <laughs> it's Twitter, and uh, you could find me there. And yeah, I mean, I'm not really, you know, I I tweet the cool stuff, but I'm not I'm not trying yeah. to. I don't have like a brand or anything I'm promoting right now. It's it's you know, I was saying to you guys before we started. I'm glad to be able to do this show. Um, you know, for me, like uh, I said yes to this show months ago, and it's good to finally be on here and talk with you guys. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to go off to the sunset through the rest of the year uh, and just kind of let the the stars shine, all the other stars shine right now with the uh, with the singles tournament and the tag tournament that's coming up and then uh, spectacular. And then, uh, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll refocus, and next year will be quite the year. It'll be, uh, it'll be the the redemption year again. I've I've been doing that before, so. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that. And you know what, Thank you've you. uh, you've earned your right into the sunset this year, and I hope you enjoy, you know, uh, having a new little bundle of joy on its way. Yeah, no sleep. Can't wait. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I know. A buddy of mine just uh, just had a kid, and that's what he keeps saying. It's like, ugh, yeah. I'm looking at you, Lou. <laughs> 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 um, and so as for myself, I'm soda underscore the underscore saxman on Twitter and Instagram. Um, you can also find me on the Media Sweaties Network, where we actually just launched our new show, Get Sweaty, where we talk about um movies sports uh everything you know that makes us sweaty and then we do a, like a favorites list at the very end so look for that over in the media sweaty network and so once again kevin thank you very much for joining us thank you and, my friend yep hey man it was a blast and on behalf of the rest of the schmoes of the north have a good evening folks